Now that Monster Hunter World has completed, Capcom has made all of the previously limited time events permanently available for all players to participate in at any time. Looking through the events tab and seeing all of these staring back at you is pretty overwhelming. Yet hidden inside these gems are quests that allow you to get lots of cool collab gear, powerful armor sets, and much easier ways to get a lot of very difficult to obtain components. As such, I've been gathering the ones that I think are the best for you folks to check out at various stages in the game. If you haven't seen the previous roundup videos of these events, I would highly recommend you go check those out. They'll be popping up in the top right corner depending on what you're watching on, but I'll also put them in the description for you. I'm Lighted Up Dan, and on this channel we cover action RPGs, roguelikes, and MMOs to name a few. For this roundup, we're going to be looking at late game content that you can do. And with that said, Let's get to it. We previously took a look at that event that you can farm to get the Guild Palace weapons. These are some of the best looking weapons in Monster Hunter in my opinion. So how do we go about upgrading them to Rarity 12 and unlocking their full potential? Well, we're going to need a Hero King coin as well as some Master Rank Elder Dragon materials. You may have seen various weapons requiring these coins, but you've never really understood where to go to get them. You, my friend, are looking for Arena Quests, which you can only take via the Arena Quest giver in in the gathering hub. This is a shared space where folks can go to when they're playing in the same session to come and hang out together, kind of like an MMO. You're going to need to do any of the five star MR arena challenges in order to get a hero king coin guaranteed. There's just a couple of caveats when it comes to the arena missions. Firstly, you're not going to get any monster parts, kind of like some events where you get specific drops for steamworks, fuel, etc. And secondly, you have to pick one of the predetermined loadouts available for the quest. This makes these challenges really rough and i mean really rough you can do these as a duo if you're playing in an online session and i'd highly recommend doing that it makes it a lot easier if you were friendless like me during this recording then you're just in for a rough time i would advise you pick one which has the best weapons slash loadouts available for you for your playstyle and the monster you have the best time tackling i took the aiming for the light quest against namiel and i used the lance while i do find the lance pretty cozy not having recovery up or health boost or anything like that means that that my fears were true. It is a skill issue. You've also got to keep in mind that you don't take any food buffs in here either. So prepare to get blighted left, right, and center. It's an absolute nightmare. After drying yourself off both in-game and IRL from the tears that you've shed, you will be rewarded with a guaranteed Hero King coin. And if you're really lucky, you'll get two. You can grab the rest of the materials required from any Master Rank Namiel in an event or an optional or an investigation. And then boom, you can upgrade your Guild Palace weapons to Rarity 12, and my god are they good. Next up is a 6 star MR24 quest called The Wrath of the Thunder Descends that pits you up against a Tempered Zenoga. Doing this quest nets you 2 sealed face stones and a bunch of carved face stones. These are the highest rarity master rank face stones giving you access to the strongest, rarest decorations in the game. Including the 4 slot decorations which you can only get from the master rank face stones. Regular Zenoga is harder enough, but Tempered Zenoga is something else. You are in for a treat. I like to make sure I've got 20 plus lightning resistance to make me invulnerable to the lightning blight and of course give me some great defense against Zenoga. As Zenoga attacks in quick succession, I like to bring the lance for this fight and the Tempered Zenoga is going to go hard. As with all monsters in Iceborne, the fights are designed for you to utilize your clutch claw. So make sure you're wounding all the parts at every opportunity and you're sending Zenoga into the wall for some juicy wall bangs. This is a super popular quest to farm, so even if you're not in a session, if you fire off an SOS flare, you will fill out pretty quickly. Alternatively, check for active SOS flares and go join someone else's. After you're done accumulating enough static electricity to start a forest fire, you will be rewarded with your sealed and carved face stones. This will give you access to the rarest and most delicious four slot gems. Yeah, that includes critical protection. This is a fantastic way for you to bolster your repertoire of very strong decorations. Next up, we've got a six star MR24 event that you can farm to get some really nice armor spheres. Brand new Brute pits you up against a Brute Tigrex who likes to scream and shout the house down. Other than giving me PTSD from my teenage years, this variant of Tigrex might be even more brutal. It just keeps going with the attacks. It's not really about having a high level of earplugs because the roars themselves are just attacks. A cozy weapon like
like Lance or anything shielded is going to be pretty helpful for you to get in there. At least I find. You're going to notice a lot more shinies breaking off than usual and you need to pick these up because they're actually armor spheres. Ensuring you're utilizing your clutch claw to get wounded parts and wall bangs whenever available. And of course being aided by fellow hunters who are hungry for armor spheres. Not at all an easy fight but when you are successful you'll be rewarded with a bunch of king armor spheres, some heavy ones and maybe even a true armor sphere or two. These are collectively the strongest tier of armor spheres in the game and you'll be able to get out a lot of upgrades with them. Once more, this does seem to be a pretty popular event to farm so if you do SOS, you should be able to get a squad. Or at the very least, Chubmaster. And finally, I've saved the best until last here. A farewell to Zenoga is a six star MR24 event. You'll be facing off against Zenoga this time inside the arena. And much like with the previous event with the shinies dropping a lot, you're going to have the same thing happening here. However, this time around, it's for Steamworks fuel, not for armor spheres. I know what you're thinking, but you need to hear me out. Once more with Zenoga, I like to take 20 thunder resist to make me immune to thunder blight and to just give me some bonus defense against the big light attacks. Its attack patterns have sequences, so make sure that you look out for the big combo attacks. Get your clutch claw out for the boys, wall bang it for the girls, and call upon your fellow hunters to share the pain with you. If you watch my videos and you're having deja vu, there's a good reason for it. This is such a good quest that I made its own dedicated video. Once you're done here, if you want further details on this event, I highly recommend you go and watch it. But I'm going to try and include everything here as well, so you don't have to if you don't want to. After you're finished picking up sparklies whilst trying not to be turned into a battery, you'll be rewarded with various Dragon Vein Coals. After beating Iceborne, not only do you get access to these MR24 quests we're covering over here, but you can also set your Steamworks to use 100 fuel a go, making it 10 times faster. Just as well, because you're going to end up with tens of thousands of fuel. I had 9,000 after one go. Going through until the cutscene is going to get you an absolute ton of materials. I got 40 hard, 40 heavy, and 10 king armor spheres. I also got 50 50 steel melding tickets to get common to rare decorations, hundreds of ancient potions, and 30 steam tickets which you can meld for items. Is farming for nourishing extract an absolute pain in the ass because of all the mega demon drugs and armor skins that you need? Not anymore. Do that quest, get your steam tickets, and trade them one for one for mega demon drugs and mega armor skins. This quest really has it all. And with that, that's our roundup completed. Hopefully these have been really useful for you and have helped helped just demystify the events that little bit more. Let me know in the comments below if there are any quests that you do that are absolute bangers which we haven't covered so far. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you can subscribe for more action RPGs, roguelikes, and MMOs. And if you want to catch the live streams, we've got open lobbies and we do some hunts together. For more awesome events, check out the other roundup videos we've got. But until next time, I'll see you in the new world.